Here's how this video is going to work. The next part of this video is a short video essay, entirely written by an algorithm. That algorithm was trained by looking through dozens of scripts from top YouTube creators and instructed to write something similar when given a writing prompt. Whatever the algorithm wrote, I then performed and animated. After the video essay, I will then show you how I did this and why machine learning is here to stay on YouTube. Keep an ear out and see if you can hear the influence of some of your favorite educational channels. An SSL favorite, cloud aspect ratio of the story, continues in Boeing, up-feeling Netflix. Materials put new testing, that the proto version union takes their screens with the owned of the math, and the suburbs is beginning to be budging warm. During the time the protagonist is in the script, and if you do some of them and then set me, that you can do to make sure that you're going to be rid of this to fill in the algorithms. And if you have a lot of artificial core writing, Jane's incredibly important to tech the channel. On the music plan, check it out. We can also say that you can do something else. Don't worry. I'll need to do is if you want to learn the fundamentals to music keys, because the most important feeling serves by the gap piece of writing, including the song and then modify your runs and give it a bit more useful. He's going to be listening to it, so if you want to keep going, helps that simple analysis is a lot of composition. Anyway, years for watching. If you want to help make these videos possible, please consider supporting on Patreon. You can also join the same mailing list for scans of all same episodes. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and keep on rocking. Hey guys, chance to today, we're going to talk about blues. This is a bit more useful by Infinite Eleven, in situations who was a pretty staff song. Take Darksteel, but if you virgin them, and if we attacking the notes for a less part, we get something but biological. You have to do those things first if you want to learn the R talked effectively. If you have a much straightforward tool, for instance, if you want to keep going to create a lot of different answers behind Latin, give us a utilizes rap. We get a bit of a completely short piece of cooking and tends to be pretty fun to approach your flats. In the spreadsheet, Jacques, which will be truly library as a dog or a interact, and to explain that, in the end of exercise comes out on the rover. Word, job, or pre-plan, and you can do those with lowest alarm. Sending learning and learning your reading drill becomes slice. And I saying that you can do be doing on pipe that the first bill, I am souvenir. I think that's the fangs. He was defined by a resort for dark or full. I am shooting hope. I want to work on it lore to the components of the instrument. I didn't guess whether you can do an external into your Brondo system at night, and I'm sure to earn about the ingenuity selection. So measuring luck, technical watching. Start at the link below. Okay, I never said it was gonna be good. So how did I do this? And why is this relevant to YouTube specifically? I made this video using machine learning, which is a fancy way of saying that I used statistics and a bunch of data. Machine learning can be used for a variety of applications, including image processing, product recommendations, autonomous driving, but they all boil down to one key principle. That is you take a bunch of relevant data and use that to inform a statistical structure. And that structure will then, if you give it new data, which you haven't seen before, it will give you an output. Specifically for this video, I built a statistical structure via computer code, which predicted which word was most likely to follow a given sequence of words. Consider the incomplete sentence, cars without human. If you were to ask a person to predict which word came next, they would probably say drivers, or maybe inputs. This is because humans understand how language works, and imply from context that human here is an adjective rather than a noun. Cars have drivers, and so maybe the noun following the adjective is drivers. A machine has no innate understanding of how our language works, and so can't make a prediction based on context. So how do you train it to write? Statistics and data. I gather data from a variety of amazing YouTube creators. I received written scripts for videos made by Real Engineering, Draw Curiosity, Wendover Productions, Tearzoo, Twelve Tone, College Info Geek, Lessons from the Screenplay, and then I added scripts for my videos into the mix as well, for good measure. 
I then took all the scripts and bunged them into one big file, and told the computer to look at the first 100 words. Given the first 100 words, and all the words that the 101st could possibly be, i.e. all the words that appear at some point in the document, which one did it think it was? It took a guess, in this first instance a totally random guess, and if it was right, then it changed the statistics that governed its prediction to make it more likely to predict that word in the future when faced with the same 100 input words in that order. If it was wrong, then it made it less likely to predict that word when faced with the same inputs. It then moved along by one word, considering words 2 to 101, and tried to predict the 102nd word. Depending on if it got it right or not, it made a correction to the internal statistics, and then moved on. It did this for every 100 word segment of the file. So as it moved through all the data, it got better and better at making predictions. But by the time it reached the end of the file, it had only seen some combinations of words once. Other combinations would be more popular. So to improve the learning, it then went back to the start of the file and repeated the whole process several times. After doing that, it was then capable of writing text, given a 100 word writing prompt. After taking in those 100 words, its predicted word is added onto the end of the writing prompt, and so included in the input data, which was now 99 provided words and one machine predicted word. It then repeats the process, predicting a word based on the input, which is then added to the end of the prompt. Write more than 100 words in a row, and the machine is now working out what to write next, given what it has written before, with no more human input. The video essay in this video was the product of the computer writing 500 words given my introduction. And it did some stuff surprisingly well. For instance, it really nailed the end of the video, just in the middle. So as far as I can tell, this was a mishmash of lots of different outros from 12 Tones videos, but they followed enough of a pattern that the algorithm just recognised what was going on and recreated it, but then carried on to the next script. So remember that all the scripts were in one file, one after the other. So apparently, my writing prompt was interpreted by the algorithm as being the middle of a video rather than the start. One of the key things to note is that obviously the script doesn't make any sense on a gross scale, but the individual sentences sometimes, I don't want to say for the most part, makes sense. In other words, the script learned basic grammar, and there are a couple of more complex structures like clauses, but the sentences in context don't make any sense. And apart from a couple of examples, there isn't really any consistent vocabulary between them. I think this is because I trained the algorithm on lots of different YouTube creators, and they did very different things. They made videos about music theory, or about studying, or about aeroplanes, and so the algorithm ended up being an uneasy compromise between all of their different styles and all of their different specific vocabularies. I suspect that if you trained a bot using just one channel script, although they'd have to have a lot of them, that you'd end up with a better performing, more targeted bot. Similar to those which are already being used to write YouTube videos. Algorithmically generated videos have been active on this site for years, producing highly targeted videos mostly aimed at children. That's because A, there's a very large market for children videos, and b, those videos tend to be very simple. As this video has demonstrated, video essays are very complicated to write. They need to be succinct, they need to be both ideally entertaining and informative, and they have to have an overarching point, there has to be an argument. This project took me several weeks to code and run, even on high-end machinery. However, as processor technology evolves, more sophisticated algorithms are developed, and crucially, more data becomes available. As more videos are uploaded to YouTube and can be scraped for their content, expect to see more algorithmically generated videos like this one. And in the future, they might actually make sense. But that will be only one example of machine learning revolutionising the world. I mentioned earlier that autonomous vehicles are powered by machine learning, and in the future we can expect our roads to be mostly populated by self-driving vehicles. But it doesn't stop there. If machines have learned to drive, why limit them to roads? Why not let them loose on a racetrack? Driverless cars could compete with one another, with teams labouring to engineer not just the fastest car, but also the smartest AI to pilot them. That would be much more complex than what I've done here. The AI would need to manage battery power, know when and how to overtake safely, and adapt to changing weather conditions. It would be incredibly exciting to watch and follow the development. It would be a whole new hybrid of sport and technology. Except this is already happening, and it's called Roborace. 
This whole time, you've been looking at their self-driving cars. These are electric vehicles driven by increasingly smart AIs, developed competitively by teams. Competitions have a really long history of accelerating technological progress, and portions of the code used by RoboRace are going to be open source. So they're trying to push forward the development of machine learning and autonomous driving in general. They're currently in season alpha. This is the first round of competitions between teams around the world. They're developing hardware, software and the actual format of what the races are going to be like. This is an incredibly exciting time of experimentation and university teams like the Technical University of Munich are able to take part in it without having to commit to the whole race. Basically, RoboRace are trying to create an environment where software engineers can develop themselves and also the field. Check out the playlist in the description for videos all about the technology used in the artificial intelligence and to learn more about Season Alpha. You can also follow them on Instagram and there's a mailing list, again, links in the description. Over the next couple of months, I'm going to be working with RoboRace on a couple more videos, learning more about the artificial intelligence and, I'm really excited, seeing some of Season Alpha myself. And of course, I'm going to bring you with me. Thank you to RoboRace for sponsoring this video and also a massive thank you to all the channels who volunteered their scripts to be used as training data. There'll be links to all of those channels in the description as well. Also linked in the description is a video where I talked to the code of how I made this in much more detail. That's available exclusively from my Patreon, so if you'd like to watch that then please consider supporting the channel. Thank you very much for watching the video and I'll be back next month with some more machine learning which is going to be a lot more driving based. I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching.